The Battle of Yamama was a turning point in the history of the Quran. Will you elaborate? It was due to the aftermath of this battle that the followers of Muhammad were forced to put the Quran to writing. At the very beginning of Islam, the Quran was being memorized and not yet compiled into a written form, especially since as long as Muhammad was alive and receiving revelations over a long period of 23 years, new surahs were being added while others were being revised, deleted, and or abrogated. All verses in the Quran that speak of it as a book are wrong and deceiving since the Quran was never in book form while Muhammad was alive. When Muhammad died, there existed no singular codex of the Quranic text. That is, there was not in existence any collection of revelations in a final review form. Also, there was not a single memorizer who knew all the verses of the Quran. All these verses were scattered in the memories of hundreds of Huffad memorizers. Without a doubt, Muhammad failed utterly in his primary mission of giving his followers a single authorized scripture because in reality he died without authenticating a unified codex of the Quran. The fact that he left his followers with seven modes or versions of the Quran speaks volumes about his failure. The consequences of this failure became paramount when his followers were reciting different versions of the alleged words of Allah. This failure has endured and continues for the last 1400 years. All attempts by his present followers to gloss over this fact are doomed to fail since the records of Muhammadan scholars in the centuries after his death attest to otherwise. After the death of Muhammad, many Arab tribes broke into revolt against the state of Medina. Khalifa Abu Bakr organized 11 corps to deal with the apostates. The Battle of Yamama was fought in December 632 AD in the plain of Aqraba in the region of Yamama between the forces of Khalifa Abu Bakr and Musaylima, a self-proclaimed prophet like Muhammad. Musaylima and most of his followers were massacred by the armies of Abu Bakr, but at the same time, hundreds of those men who had memorized different sections of the Quran also perished, and with them, many verses of the Quran. As the memorizers, Huffaz, were becoming extinct through slaughter in battle or otherwise, Umar ibn al-Khattab recommended that the Quran should be committed to writing. Abu Bakr entrusted the task to Zayd bin Thabit of al-Madina, who used to be Muhammad's secretary. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 6.509, narrated by Zayd bin Thabit. Abu Bakr al-Saddiq sent for me when the people of Yamama had been killed i.e. a number of the Prophet's companions who fought against Musaylima. I went to him and found Umar ibn Khattab sitting with him. Abu Bakr said to me, Umar has come to me and said, casualties were heavy among the Qurra of the Quran, i.e. those who knew the Quran by heart on the day of the Battle of Yamama. And I'm afraid that more heavy casualties may take place among the Qurra on other battlefields, whereby a large part of the Quran may be lost. Therefore, I suggest you, Abu Bakr, order that the Qur'an be collected. So I started looking for the Qur'an and collecting it from what was written on palm stalks, thin white stones, and also from the men who knew it by heart, till I found the last verse at Surah At-Tawbah, Repentance, with Abi Khuzaym al-Ansari, and I did not find it with anybody else. All were brought together and the text was constructed. If it were true that there were many memorizers of the Qur'an, why then did they need to collect the Qur'anic verses from diverse and unrelated documents, such as leaf stalk, bone, parchments, as well as the memories of men? From the above quotes, it is clear that the pagan Arabs had not by then mastered the art of writing or the use of writing materials, such as clay, papyrus, metal sheets, or even skins of animals. The Arabs of the Hijaz, contrary to all the efforts of Muhammadan propaganda, were mostly illiterate, uneducated, uncivilized, nomadic, and semi-nomadic people. Abu Bakr and Umar recognized that there were other masters of the text of the Quran, such as Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Ubaid ibn Ka'b, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Ali bin Abi Talib, and others, alongside Zayd bin Thabit, who were authorities of equal, if not more, standing with him, and who were qualified to produce authentic codices of the Quran in written form. The manuscript compiled by Zayd, though highly prized as it was, 
nevertheless was not regarded with any greater authority than the others once these began to be put together. And it was for this reason, therefore, that Zay's Codex was not publicly imposed on the whole community as the officially sanctioned text of the Quran. Zayd's text was, in fact, virtually concealed after its compilation. Upon the death of Umar, it passed into the private keeping of Hafsa, his daughter. Far from being given official publicity, it was set aside and given no publicity at all. By the time Uthman became Khalifa, although the other codices were gaining prominence in the various provinces, this codex had in fact receded into the private custody of Hafsa, Muhammad's widow, who simply kept it indefinitely in her personal care. It may have been compiled under official supervision, but it was never regarded as the actual official and sole authenticity of the text of the Quran. It had become just one of many codices of equal authority that had been put together at roughly the same time. It is vital to point out to our listeners that the compilations of the Quran were not under the supervision of Muhammad to give it authority and sanctity, but done without his authority by his followers to mitigate against the very real chance that it would have otherwise been lost. In other words, and contrary to what Muhammad's followers have us believe, there was no divine guidance in his collection. Hence, to standardize the Quran into a singular codex, the third Khalifa, Uthman bin Affan, instructed Zayd bin Thabit to compile a second revised edition of the Quran. In 651 AD, Uthman bin Affan canonized the Medina Codex and ordered all six other versions of the Quran that were originally collected by the most intimate companions of Muhammad to be destroyed. Thus, based entirely upon the Muhammadan records themselves, any self-respecting intelligent person must come to the conclusion that there were major discrepancies in the readings of the different texts that necessitated the draconian instruction to burn the alleged holy words of Allah. The claims by the followers of Muhammad that the Quran that they have today is exactly the same as that revealed to Muhammad 1400 years ago is a blatant lie as the Muhammad and Muslim records themselves clearly show. The Qur'an that we have today is actually the product of almost 300 years of editing and altering and all the denials by Muhammad's followers are desperate attempts to deceive the uninformed.